Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Amelia and this is Amelia Budgets and thank you so much for tuning in. Here on my YouTube channel, I post a variety of budgeting videos. So if that is content that sounds like something that you may be interested in, I would love it if you would subscribe. So today I'm doing my October paycheck number one budget closeout. So October paycheck number one for me went from October the 6th up until October the 19th. This was my first like paycheck essentially in a full month that I was actually like planning on budgeting in multiple months. So when you guys saw like my last budget closeout for like September, like that September 22nd video, um, that was kind of just like a bit of a one-off type situation. This paycheck for October was really me trying my very best to get back on track. And honestly, like I've been very like happy with how I, like the progress that I've been making over the last few weeks. So it means that in total for so far, <laughs> I have budgeted for a full four weeks, right? So again, even though this is only October paycheck number one I already had done like that September 22nd paycheck and again that September 22nd paycheck wasn't like the best time because I did have to pull money out of savings to like pay off my credit card and everything but I am happy that I have been consistent for as long as I have so anyways let's go over my totals and I'll tell you how I did so the first thing that I have is my income so again I am a salaried employee I get paid the same amount every other paycheck um and Yes, because one paycheck has insurance, one paycheck doesn't. Now, when I set up my November budget, I thought that I had maxed out my CPP NEI because when I got my paycheck, I didn't really understand what the pay stub was saying. And when I called my dad to ask him about it, he explained to me what happens with CPP NEI. Now, my dad makes much more money than I do for reference. So he was like, oh yeah, like this is definitely what it is. And I was like, oh, that's that makes total sense. And he like explained it to me. And like, that's what I kind of explained back to you when I did my November budget. No, I did not max out CPP NEI. I do not make that much money. Um, I got a comment from one of my subscribers telling me that what I should do if I'm not understanding my pay stub is I should ask my HR team. And my department does have an HR business partner, but we also have like HR coordinators as well. So I sent an email to like the HR coordinator for my department and I was like, hey, do you have a second so I can like ask you some questions about my pace check like this isn't making a whole ton of sense and she was super nice she jumped on a team's call with me and we sort of like walked through everything basically the reason why I ended up making slightly more money in this paycheck for reference what it was is I brought home $2,067 which was $89 more or $98 more than I expected the reason why was because they were having this like I've worked at a big company but um it was like a wellness credit so it was like a bunch of people were getting like 150 dollar like bonuses i guess but then like with taxes and everything it only worked out to be like 89 dollars or 98 dollars more than my normal paycheck even though the bonus was for like 105 but in terms of cpp and ei she told me that i will max out i'll max out one of them i think in the end of november or beginning of December and I won't max out the other one I think until the end of December so I'm still going to get to max out CPP NEI at a certain point this year it's just not as much money as I thought I was going to get because I was like oh like this is amazing like I'm going to get that extra $98 for the rest of the year but that is not true so unfortunately what it means is like when I set up my November budget I set up my November budget wrong right like I said I thought that I was going to get the four four thousand seventy four dollars in reality like I'm not going to get that much money so not ideal but it's okay so yeah anyways all that being said I did receive ninety eight dollars more than I expected to in my salary but it doesn't mean I actually maxed out, maxed out CPP and NEI yet Next, in terms of other income, uh, I did get my climate action incentive. So that's a thing, I believe it's Canada wide, but it's at least Ontario wide. Um, you get like a carbon tax rebate, I guess, and it was $122. And I did get that during this time, which again was not expected. So an extra $122. So in total for this paycheck period, I brought home a total of $2,189. So that was actually 
$220 more than I expected. So you guys, if you guys watched my video on Monday, you'll know that I forgot to charge my phone for my calculator. So I have to use my old one. But if I take the $98 and I add the 122, that does equal the 220. And if I quickly 2890 or 2189 minus 1969 gives me the 220. So all of that reconciles. So that is good. Next, I'll move on to my fixed expenses. So again, fixed expenses for me are things like um, like bills, basically. Um, I don't necessarily like always, they're not always bills, but they are things that I like pre-plan for, I guess is what you could say. So anyways, the first fixed expense that I had was my rent. I did save $600 for my rent this um pay period, which was great. I hadn't done this in a long time. Like again, if you guys watched my like September closeout video, like I had to pay my full rent out of one check, which is why I ended up having to pull some money out of savings. Again, I had to pay off a credit card too. But anyways, I'm happy to get back on tra track when it comes to this because this is going, this is half of my rent to pay my November the first rent. So again, there was no difference there. Next, I have my debt and my debt was $350. So again, no difference for that. Savings was $80. Um, $80 is $40 every week or $80 I get paid. If you do that for the entire year, you'll have over $2,000, which I say all the time, but I think that is just like a cool little way to save a little bit of money. So yeah, there's no difference there. Um, and I'll also too, in terms of like my debt, I made a debt payment, like I'm filming this video on Saturday. Um, Saturday, October the 21st. You guys aren't seeing it until the following Wednesday. But like I got paid yesterday, which was October the 20th. I made another pe debt payment on October the 20th. So I right now only have four debt payments left, I believe. Like I have one at the beginning of November. And then yeah, I have four debt payments left of this $350. So that's super, super exciting. Um, next on this list, I have hydro and hydro, I budgeted 70, I actually only spent 54, which is a positive amount of $12 or not $12. It's a positive amount of $16. Someone can't do math. Now I can't find my light out. Let's see if it's actually in here. Yeah, it is. Sorry about that, you guys. Yeah, so it's $16 more than I expected or $16 less. Sorry. Next, I have iCloud and my iCloud subscription is $2. So there's no difference there. My car insurance, I budgeted $129, which was exactly correct. And sinking funds. Okay, so actually, I did $600 towards my sinking funds. And you'll see when I... I'll explain at the end. But yeah, I did $600 more than my sinking funds. So that's actually $400 over than what I expected. Um, because I need to put money into sinking funds as messed as possible. So anyways, if you add all of these categories up, it gives you a total of $1,815. So if I take the $16 that I originally saved and I subtract the $400 that I added extra to my sinking funds, um, I was actually over budget by $384, which again is not great, but it, it'll all work out. Don't worry. And if I quickly check that 1431 minus 1815 gives me the 384. So yeah, that reconciles, which is perfect. Um, now on to my variable expenses. So again, variable expenses are things that I do my weekly check-ins for. So variable expense, the first one was groceries. I budgeted 120. I actually spent 113. So that was a savings of $7. Dining out was amazing. I budgeted 120. I actually only spent $50 in dining out. So that was a savings of $70. Gas, I budgeted 80. I spent 69. So that was a savings of $11. And then miscellaneous, I budgeted 200 and I spent 192. So that was a savings of $8. So again, all positive numbers, which is nice. If you add all of those categories up, it gives you a total of $424. And if I quickly figure that out, 520 minus 424 leaves me with $96 under budget in my mis variable expenses. If I take seven plus 70 plus 11 plus eight, it gives me a total of $96, which is perfect because that reconciles. So now let's bring down all my numbers and I'll figure out how much money I have left over at the end of this paycheck. Spoiler alert, it is negative, but it's okay. Um, the first thing I do is bring down my income. So I budgeted the 1969. I got the 2189, which was $220 more. So again, 21, 2189. Then I bring down my fixed expenses, which is 1815, which again was 
$384 more than I expected to spend. So minus $18.15, and then I subtract my variable expenses, which is $424. So minus $424, um, which was, again, the positive $96. So that leaves me technically actually over budget by $50. And because I had originally thought I was going to have $18 like left, but I actually was like $50 off, it means that I'm actually $68. $68 negative, like more negative than I expected to be. And if you take the 220 minus the 384 plus the 96, that gives you the 68. So it does reconcile. In case anybody's curious, it's actually okay. I didn't end up actually moving the sinking fund money until like technically, 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 if you're going to get... <laughs> If you're going to get really like clear about when I was actually making these transactions, which is, and this paycheck is supposed to be from October the 6th to October the 19th, I actually didn't do any sinking funds during this time. I waited until I got paid before I put, like paid for like on October the 20th before I moved the money into sinking funds. And basically I was just trying to see how that would kind of work out. I had only budgeted $400 for the entire month for sinking funds. So I knew that taking this $50 kind of from like my next paycheck wouldn't be the end of the world. Again, it's not like necessarily the best way to do things, but that was just the choice that I had made. Again, my sinking funds for me right now are absolutely not in cash. I'm doing them all in a savings account. So I am able to like move them pretty easily from like savings back to my checking in case I need to spend it. But I'm just, I wanted to do this just to make it a little bit easier for myself um, to have the $600 here now, rather than having to like wait until my October paycheck number two. So anyways, that is it for today. Thank you so much for tuning in. Again, my name is Amelia and this is Amelia Budgets. I hope you all have an amazing couple days. My next video should be up on Friday. To be perfectly honest, I don't know what that's going to be, but there should be a video up on Friday. So yeah, anyways, have an amazing couple days, everybody. And I will talk to you again on Friday. Goodbye.